Along with education, the security and safety of students at schools throughout the nation is at the forefront of every district's mission, and that priority often moves even higher after terrifying tragedies like this year's massacre in Parkland, Florida. But what measures do schools take to keep harm from walking right through the front doors? News Press Now's Alex Flippin put our local schools to the test in this special report, Open Door Policy. I'm starting this story differently than I have any other in my career. I'm able to report it because I'm a journalist. I want to report it because I'm a parent. It starts with this little box at the front door of a St. Joseph High School. It represents one of the first layers of security for anyone wanting to get inside. Hi, how are you today? Who are you here to see? I'm Mark Warren, Vice President of Strategos International. Warren's company helps train schools, churches, and businesses what to do to prevent intruders from entering their buildings. and what to do if it ever happens. We look at it from an intruder response. How would a person get into the school and how can we create the layers needed to give us time and become a deterrent and everything else? On a recent trip to this school, I pushed the button on this little box expecting to be asked who I was and why I was here. Instead, I was told the door was open and to come on in. It wasn't the first time it had happened, but because of recent tragic events in the news, it raised some alarm bells. You see this on a regular basis. You're not the first one that's seen it. I've seen it way too many times where the, it gets, the buzzer goes off, they just push the button, they don't even look at the screen to see who's there. So, we put it to a test. We sent a News Press Now producer with a hidden camera to each of the three public high schools in St. Joseph. She has no children and never offers a reason for why she's visiting the school. Anyone she sees would have been visible and vulnerable to a stranger's intentions. At Central High School, our producer rings the bell and is told... Hey, you can come on in. Okay. Once inside, she walks freely throughout the halls, passing what appear to be faculty members before making it to a gym full of students. At Benton High, our producer rings the bell, never says a word, and is told the door is open. She passes dozens of students while she roams the hall. At Lafayette, she doesn't have to ring a bell as a polite student holds the door for her. And she again walks past staff and dozens of students before entering a gym where class is in session. In all, she spends about 11 minutes inside the schools and not once is she asked why she's there. There's so many problems with that, that a parent that, that does not have custodial rights could be coming in, uh, a parent that has a, an order of protection against them that is not to have contact with the child just trying to pick them up. Or worse, we took our findings to St. Joseph School District Director of Student Services, Dr. Solon Haynes. Why do we have those boxes with a camera on it that we got a buzz if I don't have to do anything but hit the button to get in? And that's not the protocol. It's just to just say, hey, come on in, um, doors open. You know, the protocol is that they're supposed to ask the name and your purpose for being um, in a building. And then when they do buzz you in, they're supposed to have you come right to the office. Dr. Haynes provided News Press Now with a copy of the district's procedures, which state just that. He says the fact that it wasn't followed is unsettling. That's concerning. That is because, you know, not only do we need to make sure our staff know the proper, but our students too. Mark Warren says the task of screening visitors is often a job added to the workload of already busy front desk staff. Our producer having the door held for her and not being stopped by staff, the result of people's aim to be polite. He says it's not sinister, just a lack of training. That should start with a simple question. Do you know where the office is at? Let me show you. He also suggests requiring ID from visitors and issuing visitor badges to help raise alarm if someone walking the halls doesn't have one. Dr. Haynes did point out the entire district staff does receive intruder training at the beginning of every school year. But that our experience at the high schools warrants attention. Do you feel confident that if I went to those schools today, I wouldn't be buzzed right in? I'd be very disappointed. It's very important that we follow that protocol and that we ask those people what their purpose is and we re-educate our students and our staff. Do not let people in if you do not know who they are or the, why they are at school because, you know, that's one of our top priorities is the safety of our students and our staff. Last week, after contacting the district about this story, a district-wide email was sent reminding administrators about the procedures for allowing visitors in the building and the importance of following them. For News Press Now, I'm Alex Flippin.